Hey, so today I found a post on Facebook and this post was asking how can we make this wavy abstract wall in Blender? So here's how you do it. First of all, we'll grab our default scene, we'll grab our cube and instead of deleting that, we're going to use geometry nodes and we're going to put our geometry nodes modifier on that cube. We're going to call this wavy wall. Now we can get rid of the cube by deleting our group input and instead of using that group input, we are going to use a curve line. This curve line is going to be the basis for the length of our wall. Now we're going to put the wall along the X axis. So we want the start at 0, 0, 0 and the end at about 5 meters on the X axis. Let's plug that curve into geometry output. And you can see that now we have this line. So now we have a control for the length of our wall. That will come in useful later on. Next, we need the uprights on our curvy wall. So let's duplicate this curve line node, bring this down, and in end, we're going to make that zero, in X, and in Z, we're going to make that two meters high. Now, the next step is to use these two curve lines with an instance on points node. The instance on points node lets us take all the points on this curve line and instance this curve line onto them. If we plug this into instance, you'll see that at the moment we only have two points on this curve line. So our wall is five meters wide and has two points. Let's add some more points by using a subdivide curve node. We'll drop that in and we'll increase the number of cuts. You can go with whatever you want here. I'm going to go with 50. I think that's a decent amount of different lines. Now we're going to also use a subdivide curve on this other line. In this case, this is going to give us the geometry we need to get a really smooth curve on each of these uprights. I'm going to go with a value of 150 here, so it's really, really smooth. Now, the next step is to distort this using a noise texture. So let's grab a couple of nodes. We're going to grab that noise texture node and we're going to grab a set position node. We'll drop the set position node on here and we're going to use the color output of our noise texture to offset this. Now, when I do this, we're going to notice a couple of things. The first thing we'll notice is, despite the fact that all these upright lines have a whole load of different verts, they're all essentially moving as a single object. So the first thing we need to do is we need to realize these instances that come out of instance on points and turn it into actual geometry. Now we get something a little bit different. Now, if you want to create your own black metal logo, we pretty much have it there, but this isn't exactly what we want. We actually only want to move these points back on the Y axis. So let's grab a combined X, Y, Z node. We'll drop this in here and we only want to connect up to the Y axis. Now, if we look at this from the side on, it looks pretty wavy, but if we look at it from the front, these lines are completely straight and they are back down on the origin. The next thing I want to do is because these are all getting pushed back on this Y axis, I want to do a little bit of vector math. So we'll grab a vector math node. We're going to drop this in between color and combine. And we're just going to subtract 0.5 off of this. This recenters all these values. So if you look at this from the side on, and then we duplicate this subtract node and turn this into a scale node, and you'll see it scales along this X axis. This will give us a really good control for the amount of wave that we want on our wall. Now, the waves themselves are a little bit too strong and a little bit too noisy. So in our noise texture, we'll just take the detail all the way down. We'll take the roughness and the lacunarity all the way down. We'll take the scale down to about 1.5. That gives us something a little nicer. Now, if you want to adjust this even more, just like the way we can adjust texture coordinates in material, we can do the same with this vector. We'll grab our position node and then we'll duplicate this vector math node. In this case, we're going to take this to multiply, take all our values to one, and then we're going to adjust this Z value. And in this case, I want to decrease this down to about maybe 0.4 or so. And we'll maybe increase these values up a little bit. And that just means that our waves are a little bit stretched vertically. And I think that's much nicer. Now, I might want to take this scale down a little bit, maybe back down to about one. And I think that will be fine. So we essentially have the basis for our wavy wall at this point. 
Now, let's just do a little bit of cleaning up. We're going to frame some of this up. We'll just move these off to the side a little bit. We'll move that down there. And now we have a little bit more space to work. Now, the next part can be quite tricky. At the moment, we still have curves. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn this into geometry. So I'm going to use a curve to mesh node. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, if you've done any geometry nodes before, that we're probably going to use a profile curve. Now, let me show you what happens if we use a curve line as our profile curve. We'll take the Z value, make it zero, and we'll make the X value something like 0 0.05. And we'll just look at this from the front. Now you can see these are no longer equally spaced. And what's happening here is if we zoom in, you can see when we increase the length of this line, some of these lines are going out to the left and some are going out to the right. And that means they're no longer equal. So instead of using a profile curve, we are essentially going to manually extrude these edges. So let's grab an extrude mesh node, drop this in. We're going to change this to edges because we are extruding edges. And for the moment, we're going to take this offset and put it to zero. Now we want to actually give this an offset vector. So we're just going to plug in a vector and we're going to be offsetting on the X axis. So let's use a value of 0.1 in there. And then let's just gently increase this offset to get what we want. Now, as we increase this, you can see these are all moving in the exact same direction. Now, let's just zoom in a little bit and get these fairly even. I actually think this value is OK. And if we look at this from the side, now we have a number of vertical ribbons. The next thing is we need to take these and extrude them back the way. So once again, let's just grab this extrude mesh node, drop this in. And we're going to extrude this as faces and turn off individual. Now, if we extrude this back, you can see that these are actually being extruded based on their normals. So they're not extruding evenly. So just like we did with extrude mesh, and we're going to set our own offset. So let's duplicate this vector, drop it into offset. In this case, we are extruding back on the Y axis. We'll just put a one in there for ease. And let's change this offset. We want these to go back the way. So something like that should be fine, just so we have a little bit of distance. Now, this brings us to a situation where we have a couple of issues. And to see these really clearly, I'm going to turn on face orientation and wireframe. So the first thing you'll see is these are all inside out. Now, that's an easy fix. We can just grab a flip faces node and drop this in. And that's our first issue. The second issue you'll see is this front face that we extruded back no longer exists. So we actually need to grab a join geometry node, drop this in here. And we actually have to take this mesh from before we extruded it and just join it on so we still have that. Let's make a little redirect here so that's a bit neater. Now, even although this is joining this geometry together into a single object, we still have double verts here. So we're just going to use a merge by distance node, drop this in, getting rid of any verts we don't want. So something like 0 0.01 here is perfectly fine. Now, the next thing I want to do is flatten off the back of this. Now, that can actually be a little bit tricky, but I think we should be able to manage it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this from flip faces and move this way back. And we're going to just work with this extrude mesh for the moment. Now we have a selection in here that allows us to grab the top and that's what we're going to work with. We're going to grab a set position node. We're going to drop this in here and for the selection, we're only going to use the top. And now you can see if we offset this on Y, we can move this back and forward. However, this is a single value for every single one of these verts. What we need to do is figure out the average Y value for all of these and set the position in the set position. To that value. The way we're going to do that is with an attribute statistic node. We'll plug in our mesh. We want to set this to a vector because we're dealing with vectors. We only want to deal with this top face that we created from our extrude mesh. And our attribute that we want to deal with is going to be our position. So now that we have that, we need something that we can plug into position. Now, I said that we want the average position of all of these points and move everything to that position. 
Now, if I get something like the mean average and plug that into position, everything gets condensed down to a single point because it's taking every single one of those points and moving it to that average in X and Y. Obviously, we don't want to do that. So let's grab a combined X, Y, Z node, drop this in, and we're only going to use the Y value. Now, that helps us in the sense that everything will now be moved in the same Y value, but we still have an issue with X and Y because now we're setting the position to 0, 0. We don't really want to do that. What we actually want to do is grab the original position and we want to take this combined X, Y, Z and we just want to grab the maximum value here. The way we can do that is again with another vector math node. We'll drop this in and we're going to use the maximum value here. And if we plug this in here, we should now get a flat face on the back of this. In addition to that, we also have this offset that we can use to determine how thick this wall is. Now, I just want to move this to a certain point where I don't see any of this red. And that's going to be about there. Looks as if it's about minus one meter. So now we have our wall. Let's get rid of the wireframe and face orientation because we know that's fixed. And we are in pretty good shape. The next thing I want to do, and this is just a final touch, I just want to do a smooth by angle. Smooth by angle is a really useful tool that's in geometry nodes now. It lets us do auto smooth or smooth shading based on a certain angle. And we can get a really nice result with this. Now, the last thing I want to do is go into our modifier stack. And I want to generate a bevel on this. We are going to take this and give it three segments. And we're going to take this amount down to something like 0.01. Just so we get a really smooth corner. In fact, that's maybe a little bit too much. Let's try 0.002. And I think that's much better. Now, just as a final touch, let's go into a render preview mode. Let's turn on our default HDRIs and use this internal one, I think. And we'll make sure we are set in cycles. We'll make sure we're on our GPU and we have some denoising in the viewport. Now that we have our asset created, let's shade it. Let's jump into our shading viewport. And I'm going to grab a procedural wooden texture that I created in my Blender Nodes Mastery course that you can find on gamedev.tv. Link in the description. And I'm just going to connect up this base color and that's normal to that. Let's make sure we can actually see this preview. We'll call this wood. And we'll jump into geometry nodes. Make sure we have this selected. If it doesn't show up there, that's because we have to also select it in the modifier stack. And let's select a set material node. Drop this in. Select wood. And now we can actually see that procedural texture. Now, a couple of things I want to fix on that procedural texture. Let's just dive in. Let's take the saw amount and turn that all the way down make sure our lighting is correct in here as well so something like that is fine and let's just give this a little bit of an adjustment i think we'll take the scale and just adjust this slightly that's a little bit nicer maybe even the number of rings increase that a little bit and we can mess around with this all day long really i think i do want to darken up this darker shade of wood and I'm quite happy with that and we've got some big rings there I'm not too happy with those let's get that note amount reduce that down a little bit make that a little bit more subtle and I'm fairly happy with this let's just take the roughness and do we want a noise map in the roughness I think we do let's just grab our roughness generator this is another generator that I created in the blender nodes mastery course over on gamedev.tv you can see that just gives us random roughness, which really does make a difference in the final render. Now, we're going to be doing some more tutorials over the next month or so, especially when November starts in a week or so. And check out my courses over on gamedev.tv. Links in the description. Finally, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.